Hi, welcome to today's lesson. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at common mistakes to avoid when starting your head when making business. And this also applies to any business at all. Now, this is a simple, easy to follow nugget. So stay with me as we go along. Mistake number one, which is the fear of failure. I'm sure you are all familiar with this, the fear of failure. As little or as common as this mistake is, many people still make the mistake of being afraid of failure. The biggest mistake you can make is to be afraid of failure. And that is the biggest and the greatest mistake, being afraid of failure. You learn more from failing than you do from never starting. It is only a failure if you don't learn from it. I'll give you an example of the first time I made Zobo. I'm sure Zobo, you already know Zobo is a local um, Nigerian drink. Okay, used, um, made from um, hibiscus flour, ginger, sugar, and some um, flavors. The first time I make the Zobo drink is quite funny. You know, this is a very simple example, but this is exactly how it is in life. Now, I, I, I wanted to make it so badly, I couldn't even know how to make it. And I tried with the idea of how somebody explained. I got to the market, got everything I needed, I got home, I did it. And as a matter of fact, if it were for just home consumption, it would have been better. I wanted to make Zobo to sell to people. And I've not done this before. I just went ahead. I did my best. I tried it. To me, it was okay. To my husband, it was perfect. Of course, to the children, they drank it without even, you know, telling me the outcome. But to me, it was okay. And I put this, I packaged it and I put it out. I took it to church. The first person who drank that Zobo shouted so so loudly that i was scared now what did she say she said it tastes it tastes so bitter like what kind of drink they didn't even know that i'm the one who made i was sitting right beside the woman and she screamed and she just spat the whole thing out of her mouth i'm like what is this now at that point i felt bad but what happened was that the next time i made the zobo it was perfect like it was beautiful if there's a word to describe <laughs> that drink it was so delicious and tasty that you know i did so well now if i had thought about a lot of things before making the zobo at first attempt i would have done it i would have been thinking will i do it well what if the sugar is too much what if the ginger is too much what if this what will people say what if they don't like it i'm going to fail at it i'm not going to do it Okay, and I would not have attempted to do that. And I make a lot of money making Zobo drink at that time. Okay, so that is how it is for so many people. You overanalyze and you are always scared of what's not even there. And so many of you would have gone further, even further than where I am today. Because you have what it takes. You already have it. Like you are ready made. You are a total package. But because you are scared of coming now to tell people what you do. Some of you love to teach, some of you love to impact lives, but you're too worried and scared that people will see you, that you're not doing well, you're not good enough, you're going to fail at it. Now, you need to develop your mindset that you can do this. And even if you fail at it, it doesn't mean that you have failed finally. You learn better and you do it one more time. You keep trying until people accept you for who you are. You also need to be optimistic that there's a way for me in this business. I can do it. This person does not have two heads. This person does not have 10 heads. If she can do it, I can even do better. So you need to be optimistic that your, your, your designs are beautiful. Your brand is beautiful. You are doing your best as much as you can. Okay. You also need, you also need to, um, learn more than other people. If you want to be on top of your game and you want to make sure that you avoid those mistakes as much as you come. You need to be able to learn more than other people. You need to be addicted to learning. Like you need to be a serial learner. You want to learn everything and every opportunity you get. And if you don't learn, you won't have confidence to even attempt some things. 
at this level, the confidence I have is because I've been able to learn, practice those things, and have confidence that I can teach them. And when I put up my camera and I'm shooting, I am confident that this is the result of what I'm going to get. Like this is the outcome of what I'm teaching. So you need to learn more than other people. You also need to have a proper plan and strategy. How am I going to do this? Am I going to be having, um, am I going to be learning every month? Am I going to get a private teacher? Am I going to register in a physical class? Am I going to um, spend this amount of money on materials? Am I going to put my product online? Or I want to have a physical shop. You need to have a strategy. And also you need to think like an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs are rugged people. And like I always tell people, not everybody can be an entrepreneur. Not everybody can be an entrepreneur. You need to have this stamina to withstand. Like you have this, this um, ability to hold a lot of things. The pain that comes with it, the endurance, you know, the feedback, the criticism, the good, the bad, the ugly, the best, the worst, everything. And an entrepreneur, you know, think way ahead more than an ordinary person. Because being an entrepreneur demands you to be more than an ordinary person. Also, you need to believe in yourself and your ideas. I always tell myself every morning, my ideas are valid. My designs are beautiful. I know what I'm doing. I believe in myself. So you also need to believe in yourself and your ideas as well. The second mistake is instant gratification. Where you want something quick, quick now now sharp sharp immediately like just i want it now that is instant gratification and that is a very big mistake it is a very big mistake because if you want to get instant gratification that means you are supposed to be earning a salary or your wages now that is when you work you get paid when you work you get paid as a headwear maker as an entrepreneur is getting instant gratification will not work for you your results are directly linked to the effort that you put in. And that's the beauty of being a business owner or an entrepreneur. Now, apart from the fact that as a salary earner, what you, um, what you agreed will be what you'll be paid. So even if you try to increase your efforts on the job or to do more than you're being paid, you still get what you're supposed to be paid. But in being an, um, in the entrepreneurship world, your efforts are directly linked to the effort you put in. So there is no um, two ways. If you put in good effort, you get good returns. You get good. You get you get rewarded, but not instantly. It's over time. If you work smart and you work on the right thing, okay, you get good results. Now choosing to have something now may feel very good, but making the effort to have discipline and manage your impulses can result in bigger or better reward in the future. I have seen a lot of women in business who, as soon as they start making little money from their business, the next thing is they want to look so fly on Instagram, they want to look so beautiful, they want to buy the latest design, the next thing they want to do is they want to start oppressing their friends, their families, trying to tell them that they have arrived. But as an entrepreneur, the money you make in your first few years needs to be reinvested into the business even before you start thinking of paying yourself now it's over time at that point when you start getting your reward or when you start getting your results people will start to notice and they will not know that you have done your work in the past and that is what people don't understand when they see somebody doing well online or doing very well in their businesses they want to play catch up they want to start their own business forgetting that that person who you are seeing right now has done his or her work in time past. She has waited. She has planted the seed. She has watered it. She has nurtured it. She has applied manure. She goes there every day. She clears the weeds around. You know, she has taken her time. She has built customer base. She has improved her skills. She learns every time. She branded. You know, it takes time. So instant gratification is a mistake. You know, to get instant grat gratification is making a big mistake when you want to become an entrepreneur. Like if you have come into the business because everybody's making so bad, you too, you want to make money sharp, sharp because that's what is in right now. It's easy to make, it's simple, it doesn't take so much time, 
you are making a very big mistake okay now the um uh, you need to delay gratification and this will improve your self-control and ultimately help you achieve your long-term goals faster many people want something very fast they are not willing to put in the work so if instant gratification is your motive for running your or starting your business you need to think again you know take take a deep breath slow down reanalyze the reason why you are in business and make your plan such that in the long run you are going to get your reward another mistake that we make in this headwear making business or in business generally is undervaluing or overvaluing your product many people have shortchanged themselves by pricing their products too cheaply because they feel uh, especially we that we are in this creative world like it's just you know i just used few things now and i just spent like one hour two hours and it shouldn't go like it shouldn't be too expensive and they have shortchanged themselves and some people make the mistake of overvaluing the products placing a high price on it too much that nobody can afford it at that time Placing the right value or worth on your product can be a very tedious task, especially when you are new to a business environment. Charge what you feel you are worth based on the effort you put in and the product uniqueness. I have um, a lesson on pricing strategies which will help you to clarify how you can properly price your product. Now, in the event that you work for free, understand the reason and expect return in doing that work. If you're going to be doing something for somebody for free, there should be something that would come out of it. You need to understand why you are doing it. If you are doing it, there's something you need to get in return. And if you are doing it for a fee, let the fee be worth it. Do not undervalue your products and do not overvalue your products. Now, you can also review what um, your, comp your other competitions in your locality, what they charge and how they price their products as well this will help you to guide you know you on how to price your own product as well because you're in the same industry you need to look outside the windows once in a while to check what is going on so you can know if you're on track or not mistake number four is being the jack of all trades now initially you might need to do so many things by yourself but as you grow and as time goes on you need to be able to you know outsource some things to some other people you cannot be everything being the jack of all trade is a very big mistake that so many people make and that holds their business down from growing to be profitable in this business you must see yourself first as a businesswoman and then a headwear maker that is how i see myself it's uh, actually an unpopular mindset but for me it is one that i need to succeed Many people just see themselves as, I make turbans, I make fascinators, I make headwears, I make clothes, I'm a fashion designer, and they neglect the business side, which is the most important part of running your business. For me, I'm a businesswoman who happens to make headwears, who happens to teach online, who happens to coach people, who happens to, you know, guide people. So that is how you should see yourself henceforth. You are a businesswoman and your business is headwear making not you are a headwear maker and that is just it who happens to just you know do something that's called just you know playing around doing your hobbies now you need to start seeing yourself in that um, light you must accept that you may need um, help or advice in some aspects of your business either from the start or as it grows so you need to determine the peculiarity of your business if a headwear maker you know you need to start first of all then with time you may need to ask for help or to bring someone else in to assist. Acquiring the help of a professional makeup artist, a photographer when doing your photo shoot, or engaging the services of apprentices and interns to achieve, as in to assist you when you need help or where the need arises. You need to be able to know when to get extra help. You can get interns, you can get apprentices to help you with your client's order so you are not overwhelmed. You want to do photo shoots you are the only one doing your makeup you are the only person taking pictures you are the only person doing backstage videos i mean you cannot be everything the outcome is going to be poor but when you get a professional makeup artist a professional photographer 
you can do the styling yourself you can get to the market check what fits your headwear any outfit that goes with your headwear i remember when i did the beret shoot at that time okay when i made that beret i knew i was going to make it come out looking good and i went i got to the market i looked for the leather jacket i got i bought it i styled myself okay but i got um a professional makeup artist to do my face beats and i got a professional photographer to take those pictures all right so you need to you cannot be everything initially i will do the i still do product photography i style my dummy uh, my headwear on the dummy i i use my um, device to take pictures good pictures you know i still do some editing but sometimes you need to know when to bring in external help okay now you can also periodically consult people with you know you can um, consult professionals such as lawyers to know the tax you're supposed to pay you know to know when to strike a deal with somebody probably you want to go into a contract with another brand or someone else you need to bring in professionals so you don't cheat yourself okay you also need somebody who can help you with your accounting with your bookkeeping because you cannot overlook your finances you cannot overlook um the, the the value of keeping your book and keeping your numbers okay now this way you will save valuable time money and energy to concentrate on the business side of your headwear making now i know some fashion designers who don't even know how to make clothes they don't know how to make dresses i know somebody who makes auto gilly who doesn't even know how to pedal a machine what she does is you know she's good at what she does she gets people who does the joining part of it and she does the wrapping and the styling some fashion designers also who think like a business person would do because that is how you're supposed to see yourself as a business person a fashion designer who thinks as a business person will hire the services of somebody who is good at making clothes and making dresses to make the dress while they handle the other part which is the most important part and which is the business side so you need to understand the peculiarity of your business if you want to be the creative person be the creative person get help if you want to be the business person who does the books you can get somebody who creates your designs for you so you need to know how to go around it but you cannot be the jack of all trade in your business Another terrible mistake is failure to invest in marketing. Many people believe now that I'm making headwears now, or now that I'm a fashion designer, now that I'm a hairstylist, now that I'm, I started my business, um, I'm just going to tell a few families and a few families will tell another set of people, their friends. I'll tell my church member, I'll tell the people in my, in my worship center, in my mosque. I'll just tell people and that is it. Failure to invest in marketing, it's, 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 it's terrible okay marketing is an investment not an expense okay it's something you you invest your money in and you await the results you cannot afford not to market what you do to your prospects the people who want to buy for you from you are somewhere they don't even know about you they have their money in their pockets and you have your skills with you how do you meet up how do you connect with them it is through marketing okay starting by utilizing free or nearly free options okay such as networking when there's an event you go there when you have a yard sale or something you take your stuff there sometimes you can have exhibition you can go there you know just you consciously make use of this means to market to network okay you can use social media of course you can use your whatsapp to advertise now people use their whatsapp status to advertise a lot of things and i also do okay you can use your profile pages your pictures your instagram story with your instagram post your facebook you can use search engine optimization some are free some are paid and you can scale up as your business grows you can start with facebook ad you can use one dollar two dollars and you can um get somebody to start doing your ads for you you know you can start investing as your business grows but failure to invest at all is a very big mistake Without marketing, your business would suffer and have a, you know, it will have to function based on solely on the quality of your product, based on what people tell people. You know, you have to wait for people to come to you. You need to launch into the deep. You need to reach out to people. And the only way you can do that is through proper marketing. All right. 
tell word of mouth is insufficient it is insufficient okay so you need to do something drastical to tell people about what you do it means that if you don't have um great uh, products or services you will soon go out of business even if you have a great product or service and nobody's buying from you you still go out of business you have to rely solely on word of mouth which is not sufficient it is not enough all right so you need to take um, a conscious effort take a drastic step to invest in marketing some people will tell you i can't spend money on facebook ad i've spent so much money on facebook ad i've reached out to so many people it has helped to grow my pages i'm i'm trying to reach out to to um more people who haven't heard about my brand okay and i can't just rely on those who already know me i need to launch out to more people out there to be able to you know bring them in to enjoy the free bees you know nurture them in the facebook group and if i don't reach out to them through um paid adverts how will they know my brand they need to first of all hear about me then they come in they see the freebies the the illustration the free illustrations the free tutorials you know the pictorial illustrations before they can now see my paid classes and then join and probably some of them will even see some beautiful designs on my pages and i can make for them as well so failure to invest in marketing is another mistake that you need to avoid when starting out or if you already started out you need to work consciously to make sure that you invest in your marketing another mistake that you need to avoid when starting out or currently in your business is ignoring accounting a lot of people run away from the books a lot of people don't like to do numbers you don't have to okay but you need to do it even if you have to get the service of someone and there are also um basic accounting courses and bookkeeping courses that you can just you know keep it simple keep it very simple and it will work for you you can't afford to ignore your numbers you need to check what is going on accounting is a vital part of every business unfortunately many people ignore this practice and risk having cash flow problems you need to know which of your products brings money every time you need to know which one is seasonal you need to know how everything is going in your business bookkeeping involves a variety of procedures to ensure that all financial transactions such as sales how many design how many products you, you sold this month the receipts the purchases what you, you what you bought you know into the business the things you acquired for your business the payroll your staff those who work with you the amount you pay them the payments you do your earnings and so on all of this should be recorded either manually or electronically now having an accountant or yourself make you stay current with this transaction it ensures that the money continues to flow in and out of your business as necessary okay not only will you have the money moving through to support your business efforts and profit but you will also be accountable for every naira that was spent or received you need to keep track how much did i make this month how much did i pay myself how much did i spend on this business that's the only way you can know if you're making profit or you are losing now many times you think you're just you're just occupied with so much activities so many things to do you're creating design you're selling people the others are coming in now activity based doesn't really matter if you check deep down many people are just getting by they are not making profit okay so you need to study how all of this works so that you can know if you're making profit and how to adjust them because you will know if you don't abide by the rules of bookkeeping all right so you need to take this very seriously and please do not fall into the pit of ignoring your numbers another common mistake is trying to avoid legal jargons legal jargons means the tax you know the local government and the truth is if you want to increase your business every business must pass through this there are some things you need to do and you cannot avoid them you call them legal jargons like you're not interested but really it's a very big mistake as an entrepreneur you have to you know you have a responsibility to ensure the strict compliance with the rules and regulation guiding doing business in the states your locality or your country in which you operate you need to find out how it's been done you need to find out how much you're supposed to pay what your tax will be 
you need to calculate all of that and you need to comply strictly now failing to comply with legislation runs the risk of a loss of reputation and with this loss of your customers like you will lose your customers when you know that you're not doing your books properly you're not paying your tax you're not complying with the state rules and regulation that is guiding doing business in your state the damage costs with business reputation by a criminal conviction of regulatory body, bodies such as LASA, like the CAC, FIR, FIRS, you're supposed to pay a particular amount every month based on the amount you remit as your income. All of this, you need to register your business. Some people, businesses are not registered. You need to get your VAT number, you know, your, your um, registered number, all of those things right now. You need to get them done if you really mean business. And you need to continually service your tax like you need to pay your tax you need to pay the bills for your like if you have a big advertising board in front of your office you, there's an amount of money you need to pay for that yearly so all of that you need to factor them in and you need to strictly adhere to them okay now in the us you have like ftc irs you know you need to make sure that you take them seriously you pay their bills because it's going to be like a criminal you're going to have like a criminal record if you don't apply by this and this is not good for your brand at all now the more you do the deals with the legal parts of your business the better you'll be in the long run if you don't know how to handle legal matters with regards to your business yourself like you don't know how to you know do all of this then you can seek the expertise of a lawyer or a consultant somebody who has done this before or somebody who is doing similar you know who is in your similar business you can walk up to them ask them how they do it they'll put you through or you can just get a lawyer or a consultant who can help you to make sure that you are abiding by the business law wherever you operate another common mistake which is mistake number eight is afraid or reluctant to collaborate with fashion influencers now when i say fashion influencers it could be anybody it could be somebody you know it could be somebody you don't know now there was a lady i came across with sometime who was very reluctant to collaborate with me because she was afraid that my brand was bigger than hers and my brand was going to drown hers now this is this is a kind of mistake that we all make forgetting that we need each other to grow to survive in a competitive business world, you need as much help as you can get. While the potential for positive collaboration results into existing you know, businesses, you need to be able to find out who can help you, who you can collaborate with. There is the need to also tread with caution and critically weigh your options before you go into it. But the truth is you cannot do without it. You need somebody who is above you you need somebody who is just coming up you know like you do collaborations with the makeup artists with the photographers with a similar brand like i do collaborations with a fashion designer she supplies the clothes i supply the headwear we get a model or i model myself and before you know your brand will grow so some people are scared that okay i want to do this all by yourself it's a very big mistake you need to open your mind up look for somebody or a brand who resonates well with your brand who can complement your brand not just any um, any out person you need to recognize what is at stake what you are getting in return before you collaborate now it is the connections you form with businesses that are bigger and better than yours and the different ways you collaborate with those people you form connection ways that will help you grow your headwear business to the new levels Imagine you're collaborating. That's why many people collaborate with influencers. Just help me wear this, tag me, and before you know, they will grow their sales. So it is those kind of collaborations we do with those kind of businesses that will, you know, take your business to the next level. So don't be scared of collaborations. I've done a lot of collaboration with people that I don't even know. But when they reach out to me, I go to their pages, I check out their brands, I've worked with hairstylists, I've worked with makeup artists, I've worked with um, photographers, I've worked with fashion designers, you know, some, many of them I don't even know, I've not met physically, but when I check out, when they reach out to me, I check out their brands, I see what they are doing, that, oh, okay, what I do, 
this person can complement what I do perfectly and I collaborate with them. I get good pictures, I build my profile, I build my referrals, I build my customer base. So that is what you should do as well. So failure to collaborate, you're making a very big mistake and henceforth, try as much as possible to see who can help you according to the assignments. Write a list of anybody in your area that you can collaborate with starting from local and then you can now take your collaboration to the next level by reaching out to people you don't know but their brand can complement your brand perfectly.